Hello, welcome back to this short update video. <sighs> Sorry about slurping the brew, but sometimes it's like a, a cooling mechanism when your brew is very hot, isn't it? You have to slurp it, cools it down, makes it just right for the, uh, the palate. <laughs> anyway, I, it's a talking head video. I'm not out and about, but I've got some updates for you. So I'll try and be as entertaining as I possibly can in about 5-10 minutes in the comforts of the back bedroom. So first off, I'd like to address the elephant in the room. You may or may not know what I'm talking about. There is a video missing off my channel and um, unfortunately I've had to take a certain video down. A few voices coming through, negative voices, but nonetheless I had to heed them saying that probably wasn't the wisest of videos and what I mean by that is that as great as the footage was we perhaps shouldn't have been there um, even though it was the old thing of we just you know left footprints took photographs we perhaps shouldn't have been there so for the moment I've had to uh, take that particular video down so sorry about that and believe me I'm gutted at taking it down but had to do it, had to be done just for the moment. I don't know about the future, but just for the moment it's gone. Anyway, if you don't know what I'm going on about, private message me on Facebook or something or on Instagram or whatever. If you follow me on any of those other things, just send a quick private message. If you want to know, if you know what I'm on about, that's fine. So, like I say, a bit of an update video. So, I've been reading a very interesting book recently and I'm going to tell you what it is. And it's about the Stanage Railway Tunnels. There's the book. I'll give you a bit quick close up. Okay, it's Stanage Railway Tunnels. Okay, there you go. And it's by Trevor Ellis. Um, it is on Amazon, but it says on Amazon that it's not currently available. I got this from the Huddersfield Canal Society. I think I paid a tenner for it, and that's with package and posting. Absolute bargain. Loads of information in there. So. You know that we've been over the tops and we've been looking at the shafts and putting GoPros over to see if we can see inside the shafts. Well, this book obviously is full of information uh, and I've picked up some really good information that may update us about the things we've been looking at. First off, do you remember the video I did called An Old Well on the Moors? Well, that old well wasn't a well. As I suspected, it was a shaft for the Stanage tunnels, for the, probably for the canal tunnel. And a few of you have said to me, it's a flint pit. Okay, well, maybe a long, long time ago, I'm talking hundreds of years ago, it might have been a flint pit in that area, but that shaft was for the Stanage Tunnels and it was called Flint Pit, okay? The little um, ruined place that it was in was actually the remains of an engine house. They did have steam engines. I didn't think they did, but they did have steam engines up there. Um, I might do more on this in a future video, but anyway, they did have steam engines in there and that was one of the shafts. Now, there was numerous shafts dug across the hilltop, okay, and they dug down and they worked from various faces from those shafts as well as but from both ends. Why that one is flooded and holding water, I don't know. That remains a mystery because from what I've read in the book, it should be a viable shaft right down to the canal tunnel. I know some of the shafts they dug weren't always used or weren't always completed because apparently they dug too many. But that one, it says, was a completed shaft. So it also says some of them were capped. Now, I would have thought that was on top, so why it's holding water remains a mystery. So if anyone can throw light on that and not just speculation, that would be really, really good. But also in the book, uh, I've learned something else. Do you remember the little hut, the little shed that we saw on the hillside? Well, I've learned some information about that as well. Okay, so it says here, and I'm reading from the book, in 1939, obviously start of the Second World War, it was thought that the because the, the tunnels were used for freight, they might be vulnerable to sabotage. So they guarded not just the two ends of the tunnels, but the shafts as well. And the task was given to the local Duke of Wellington's regiment, it says TA, so possibly Territorial Army, 
and the task of standing guard at, for example, Pewell Shaft, which is where we were, which is another name for the, plint, the flint pit shaft, okay, they stood there on guard in all weathers throughout the winters of 1939 and 90, 1940. The conditions can only be imagined on that hillside, can you imagine? Today, the only remaining sign of military occupation is thought to be a small concrete hut at Flint Pit New, which is where I was, though this was not constructed in time for the initial period. Most of the time they were on the canvas, and at some point during the Second World War, they managed to get that hut constructed. So I wondered what that hut was. Didn't think it was that old, to be honest with you. I thought it was something just for walkers, or maybe that the farmer had built for sheep i don't know but it's from the second world war and it's for the people that were guarding the shafts on the hillside so that's quite interesting that isn't it so it's one of those books there's that much information in it i think i'm gonna to have to read it a second time loads of information about the problems uh, i've made it sound like it's just about the um the uh, railway tunnels it's not it's about all the tunnels the canal tunnel as well but um, it talks about how um, they had problems raising money from the shareholders. I think the shareholders for the canal initially had to put down some money, so many shillings for every share that they were going to buy. And then when they actually came back to them to get the rest of the money, some of them had scarpered, some of them couldn't pay up. There was money crises during the, the construction of the canal, all sorts of things. So it's a really interesting book, really well researched, really interesting. Another bit of information, do you remember when I pointed out to you uh, of the disused railway tunnels, I pointed out the first railway tunnel to be built, which was the Nicholson Tunnel, and that was named after the chap, the contractor that built that particular tunnel. Well, he was a bit of a devil, and here's why. It's, this is what it says in the book about him. So Thomas Nicholson obviously built that first railway tunnel. He'd just come from building the first Woodhead Tunnel on the Manchester to Sheffield uh, line, apparently, and he'd come over to Standage to build that first railway tunnel. Not the best, though, apparently. He got into trouble because, he says here, Nicholson's working practices apparently left something to be desired. An extract from the minutes of the company dated 1st of March 1848. A report, report an inspection of the canal tunnel and reveal that he had previously been given notice to improve several areas. A number of headings and sections of the canal tunnel remained insecure due to his work, I presume so. Large quantities of, quantities of spoil were being allowed to fall into the canal, uh, which had been cleaned out already several times. And it was up in front of the magistrates for reducing his workers' wages without notice and allegedly making illegal deductions from their pay. So it sounds like he was a bit of a rogue, to be honest with you. And I, I, I think I've said, I said in that other video that, that isn't there anymore, that some of the working practices uh, weren't really the best. Although we try and we think of back in the day, it was all amazing and they were craftsmen. I'm sure there was a lot of craftsmanship, but uh, Thomas Nicholson was uh, out to make a fast book, if, uh, if, uh, if I'm reading this correctly. Anyway... He died aged 70, and I'll just tell you how he died. He died in 1861, aged 70, after being run down by a contractor's engine while inspecting a railway viaduct at Ingleton. So it sounds like he was in the railway business for all his life, but eventually was run down by an engine. So that was the end of uh, Thomas Nicholson. So I've been out today in Manchester filming parts for the next video and I'll tell you what it's about or I don't normally do this but I'll tell you what it's about do you remember Medlock number five where we found or we learned about Shooter's Brook well Medlock number five in that video I got a comment from someone who said to me I've got information about Shooter's Brook that you may be interested in and so I followed that up and sure enough I met this chap, he was called Andy, and he gave me some information about Shooter's Brook. In fact, he gave me some of the best information that anyone could have given me. It's truly amazing, and obviously, I'm going to make a, a video about it. So the next video is about Shooter's Brook. 
it kind of answers questions but it also raises a lot of questions as well so i was in manchester today and i was filming all the outside bits in the rain i managed to dodge the rain as best i could I can't, <laughs> I'm going to say I weren't in the brook, I'm, I weren't, I'm not in Shooter's Brook or anything like that, but there's, there's just information. Yeah, I was dodging the rain in Manchester today and I've got to just put it together and film the bits where I'm going to actually uh, do it in here in the house because <clears throat> there's things to explain <clears throat> and it's difficult when you're out in the rain and, you know, people are walking past and stuff. Uh, so I'm going to do some of the explanation bits in here because there's... I might even draw a picture to explain things, I'm not quite sure. So that's the next video, it's about uh, Shooters Brook uh, and it's about Andy who gave me the information and the wonderful company that is allowing me to use some of their footage to show you. So that could be quite a good video to be honest with you, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to that one coming out. That said, I need to crack on with the Medlock, don't I? Do you know the last time I was in the Medlock was in July and I did Medlock number six and it was when me and Connor on a very, very hot day in summer just gone were walking in the Medlock and we took it as far as almost to Mayfield Station and then we walked back. Um, that was the last time I was in the Medlock, I can't believe it. And of course, I, that was number six and I hadn't filmed number five so I then filmed number five, that's why you've had a recent Medlock one, because I filmed that in September, but that's slotted behind the one where me and Connor were in the Medlock. So I've not forgotten the River Medlock series, and I'd like to get back in it. What it's going to be like walking in the Medlock in November, December, I don't know, because when you get arse deep in cold water, it's one thing in a, on, a, on a really hot sunny day, might be different in December so we'll see how we go on even if I fail I'll, I'll show you I'll show you the video so no not forgot the medlock I will be cracking on with that soon <laughs> I don't know when when I can muster up the courage to get my tiptoes in the uh, the cold waters of the river medlock anyway thanks for watching this little talking head update don't often do these kind of videos next video hopefully will be about shooters brook and then I don't know what's coming on after that. Obviously, I've got quite a few ideas. Thanks for watching. Oh, and there's been quite a few new subscribers to all the new people. Thank you very much for coming on board, subscribing and following me. And of course, to everyone, all the subscribers that, that watch the videos and comment and send me messages. Absolutely amazing. The messages are overwhelmingly positive. Thank you very, very much. And I shall see you very soon in the next video. Thanks for watching. I'll slurp my tea again now, eh? Oh.